everyone, this is a bit of an ad hoc kind of tutorial. Um, this is actually the first time I've done this, so it's kind of a follow along with what I do. So you remember the piece we did on wood using ink tents? I wanted to coat it in resin, so I've been tidying my studio today and I've come across all my resin bits and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. So I've taken my piece of wood, make sure it's nice and clean, dust free. And I've just picked up, I've got this Lazy Susan that I've laid down. I've made sure that my board I'm working on is um, completely horizontal and I've used a, um, oh, I've forgotten the word. <laughs> oh, spirit level, that's the one, spirit level. So I've, made, I've got a spirit level to make sure that this is as level as possible so that I'm having less mess over the edges. I've made sure this is just big enough. And obviously I can spin it around if I need to. The resin I'm going to be using is Mastercast 1 to 1. Now it's a clear artwork um, resin and it is designed to preserve and help with UV light fastness. That's why I bought it. So I only bought a couple of small bottles. You can get big bottles. So it's 1 to 1. In other words, it's 1 portion to ratio, basically 1 to 1 ratio. So what you need basically is... You've got to wear gloves. Um, these are just a set of pair of latex gloves. You do not want any contact with your skin. Um, you need a nice mixing tool and the resin comes with this like plastic lollipop stick. So that is ideal. Um, it's all about patience, mixing well, and also we will be getting some air bubbles. So I've also got this little mini blowtorch pen, which I think is fab. So what I've done first of all, I've marked out, um, I've got no idea really how much resin I need because it's, it's the first time I'm using it. So I've marked out on a couple of little um, cups the same portion. I think you can weigh out the resin but I'm not sure with this one whether you can because obviously you, it, one might weigh more than another. So you, it's, I know it's one to one as in amounts. So I'm going to take my resin and I'm wondering, yeah, I thought it might be sealed. So if I can't lift that off with my gloves on, I just need to grab a knife. Okay, so I've poured some of my resin now into my first pot. That's going to be my mixing pot. So I'm just going to pop my stick in there a second. Just pop the lid back on that resin. And now I'll pour the hardener into the other cup just to measure it out. It's quite, like say, gloopy, thick stuff. I'll just pour this in here. Like I say, I don't know whether I'm pouring in too much, as in like, you know, to cover my surface. But all I know is it needs to be one to one. And this is where pouring this is where you get a lot of the air bubbles forming. Horrible, nasty air bubbles, which is what we want to get rid of because we want a lovely, clean, clear um, result. We don't want, we want to make this picture absolutely shine, all the details and make it all glossy. We do not want it to be one full of dust or dog hairs. <laughs> um, and also we don't want the air bubbles. So I don't know if you can see, you can see, just see the air bubbles there. Let's have a look at the other one as well. Yeah, you can probably just see the air bubbles in there as well. I'm only filming this on my um, webcam, so I'm not using my full detail camera. Like I say, this is not really a tutorial, it's just to show you me doing this. Like I say, I always like to try new things. I thought, well, whilst I'm trying it, let's just show you. Hopefully it'll work. If it does, Bonus. So I'm literally I'm just pouring and making sure I'm scraping all of this hardener into the resin and then we need to mix it. And the mixing is key. So I'm just scoop that up. There we go. Put that one to one side. I don't want any drips. And now you need to really stir this well. You need to make sure you scrape around those sides and really get this st stirred in nicely. Don't 
go mad with your stirrings. Like I say, you don't want to be getting any more air bubbles in there than is necessary. Or if you can avoid getting any in there, then make sure you go right up to the sides with that stick and pull all of that mix in. And you want to mix this for about three to four minutes, really. Um, God, I sound like I'm doing a tutorial, like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Obviously, I've done a lot of research online just to make sure. Um, I can see those air bubbles. Okay, so I'll just give this another minute or so of mixing. And then we're ready to pour onto our surface. And so I think I've mixed more than I need to. You can see those bubbles now. Look at those air bubbles now. And that is what we're going to need to pop. I mean, you might use resin and you might want a nice bubbly effect. It'd be brilliant if you're doing like an underwater piece because I think you can add either inks or acrylics or I'm sure you can colour your resin as well. So if you wanted to do like an underwater piece and use your resin as one of your materials for creating colour and depth, then that is a good thing to do. Okay. So now I'm going to pour this onto my surface. Yeah, I've got way too much. <laughs> Never mind. Be a nice thick coating. So this is supposed to self level, but can you see instantly where it is hitting that surface? Um, just how glossy it is making it. Actually, this might just be just right, you know. I was worried I had too much. I don't want to waste it. It's not cheap, this stuff. Let me just get all of that out. So you've got about 15 minutes or so working time with this. And then we'll burn off any bubbles and then we'll just let it sit. So I'm going to smooth this out now. I'm just going to spread this out. And this is a nice thing about this having this Lazy Susan. I don't know, I just thought, I thought, oh, for Lazy Susan, that would be ideal for that <laughs> doing this resin work so I thought I'd just give it a go so literally all I'm doing is letting gradually pulling this out and I think that's like a hair or something oh no it's not it's just the resin I get so paranoid owning dogs that dog hairs get into everything no matter how careful I am but this, like I say, it's self-leveling. So as long as I can push this up to the edges, I think I will push it over the edges. I was going to tape it off. Um, but I think, to be honest, I might just let it go over the edges. As long as I make it go over evenly all the way around. You should look at the, oh, it's just, it's, it's like almost like um, we've encapsulated a real butterfly in there now. It's crazy. I love it. I think I can be addicted to this. I really want to try this. I've got a piece that I've done on black. Uh, well, I've turned a piece of canvas black and then I've done pencil work. Um, and I've got a feeling that this is going to be something I try on there. Now that I've done it once, or oh, let me finish it first. Let me just make sure I, this works. So let's push this. I'm going to push this right up to the edge now. So I'm going to let it go right up and over the edge. Let's just see. Pushing it right up to that edge. If it chooses to go over, it goes over. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing it as evenly as possible. Yep, it's going over. So I'll make sure it goes over all the way around. I 
probably get someone commenting and saying, that's not how you do it. And it's like, well, this is my first time. Any hints and tips? Most appreciated. I was going to get, knowing that I've got to um, use the blowtorch on this. Well, a blowtorch, the mini blowtorch on this. I was going to use something like um, electrician's tape around the edge. Um, almost like a, a frame uh, to come up to. Just worried. I don't want to work this too much. I want to make sure I get enough over those edges and then we can just let it self level across the middle. Yep, that's coming around that edge nice. Good, good, good. And this means as well, once it's done, this will be just perfect to be able to just hang straight on the wall. You'll be able to polish it, clean it. Um, and like I say, it'll just, it's just going to make this artwork absolutely zing. Push that over the edge there. Yeah, you can feel that all the way around there. Just got a good spin. Go a little bit up to one side. Let me just pull that back over. Okay, so pop my lollipop stick back in there. Just gonna pop some tissue underneath. I've dribbled a couple of little bits out over the edge there, and I want to make sure I just clean that up. Let's try and keep clean as you go. So once this stuff sets, that is it. I'm gonna clean off my lollipop stick as well. So we want to use that one again. And I see, you can see how um, glossy it is because you've got the light reflecting now over there. So I'll pull that back down again. There we go. It's looking fab, isn't it? You can actually see the ceiling reflected in that now. So let me just get rid of, I just want to get rid of this. There we go. Fab. So now, I'm going to come in, I'm going to take one glove off, because I say I'm not going to be touching anything with this with my right hand now, apart from my little um, tool here. So what I'm going to do is, it's great this, so it's basically a little gas burner. You can change, you can adjust the flame, you can turn it up full, turn it right down. And lock it into place. And I just want to bring this in over the surface and take just enough to burst those air bubbles. I've seen people do this with a lighter, but to be honest, this works so much better. You can see, I can see all of the bubbles just bursting nicely there. Just spin this around. This is what I was worried about, that I wouldn't be able to burst the bubbles. I'm going to say, if you want a nice bubbly effect, mix up <laughs> that pigment really strong. And create more bubbles, and then don't burn them away. I don't want to overheat this too much. I think we are there. Let's have a look. Now I can see there's something just in here. I'm going to go in with a blade. I'm just going to see. It might just be something on the surface there. Yep. Something not quite happy there. Let's clean that. 
You can see any little spots, like I said, I'm just going to try and clean them now whilst that resin is still moving. But I think that is looking pretty good. I can see a few bubbles there. I'm going to refill my gas actually. So it's the first time using this little thing as tool as well. literally just going to come over here yeah I could see a few more bubbles just there you can see them bursting So I'm just going to keep an eye on it for a few minutes because it looks like um, the bubbles are forming again from the surface. So until it starts setting, I'm going to just keep going with... That is still just kind of sitting. There's something there that's not happy at all. How strange. See if that moves it. Might just be the light catching it as well. But I'm really happy with that. It's looking absolutely gorgeous. If I just move it over here to a different light. And you can see how shiny that is. So yeah, so all I'm going to do now then is over the next few minutes until it starts to set, um, I'm going to just keep an eye and make sure there's no more bubbles appearing and I'll do it possibly once more with the little blowtorch but if not I'm just going to leave it overnight now and hopefully in the morning when I come back it is going to be beautiful um, and shiny enough for me to be able to pick it up okay okay so I'm coming back to this the next day um, it's set it's definitely been a learning curve anyway so you can just see, the trouble is trying to <laughs> record this without the um, getting the reflection um, of the lights. So if you can just see, let's have a look, let's just try and show you. Okay, so you can see the edge there. It's actually worked really well just pushing it up and I've just literally pushed it around the edge. Um, I'm just trying to show you. You can just see it's beautiful how it's just sealed off at the edges there. Okay, let's try and show you from another angle. It's not picking up that great the camera, so I'm gonna try and do a little bit as well on, but you can just see the finish. You can see how reflective it is. Um, so it's gonna be great just to be able to put like um, a mount on the back, as in like a, a hanging piece and this will be able to go straight up on the wall we'll be able to like you know also use the cloth just to keep it clean and dust free the only thing like I say I would do in future because I was actually cleaning in the studio today so there was a bit of dust going around um, so I was coming in whilst it was drying just picking out odd little bits of dust so what I'm going to do is just make a little um, cover a little box for anything that I do resin to sit inside and make sure then nothing is going to land and settle on there try and keep it you know sort of as clear as possible i can see there can you see a tiny little dip there where there's a just there was something i think with the wood or the surface itself so again it's another reason why when we're actually doing these pieces to make sure that if we're going to resin them thinking ahead all the time we need to make sure that all of this needs to be nice and smooth um to enable because there's a little bit just over here as well there's a little bit here of the copper leaf but I'm not catching it basically it's raised it doesn't it's fine it just adds to the texture but 
overall, I'm super, super happy. This is, you know, this is the first go. It was a bit of an experiment as well. But now you can just see how gorgeous that finish is. So I'm really, really happy with that. Okay, there we go. Ready to add a little mount to the back and pop it up on my wall. <laughs> and then we're on to the next one or two or three. <laughs> I'm going to be addicted to these. So I hope that's been like a little bit educational. Um, any questions do ask. There are experts on here that will be able to advise a little bit more than me as well. But yeah, first of many, I hope.